Hello, saints, and my uh, future saints out there, by the grace of our Lord God. Uh, today, I'd like to share something very, very interesting with you. But before we get into that, that interesting information, I need to let you know that in no way am I making any predictions or setting dates or am I claiming I'm a prophet or anything like that. Okay, let's not get crazy. Uh, this is uh, this is just for informational purposes only um, and you know I'll let you decide and through your discernment and right division and also the understanding of dispensations I let you come to your own conclusions about this information that I'm about to share with you all right now I've done the work to collect all this information and I present it to you exactly as I found it I've been sitting on this information now for over a year, actually, and I've been conversing back and forth with the uh, with the person that I found this information through, and uh, he's written a couple books about this, and I'm going to share with you the links and everything later on. It's going to be in my description box. I'm going to be sharing with you uh, probably three or four different links, but you'll understand by the time we're done. Anyway, now, we know by Rightly Dividing and with the understanding of dispensations how God is dealing with the nation of Israel okay and how he's dealing with them differently than the body of Christ and one way he deals differently between Israel and the church the Bible says that the body of Christ shall live by faith alone in 2nd Corinthians 5 7 it says Paul writes for we walk by faith not by sight in 1 Corinthians 1.22, it says, For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Now, the Jews were known for always asking for a sign. They, they had a hard time believing by faith alone. Uh, they had to have something tangible to see and follow. And, you know, such as the law of Moses being one example, and they had to live by having a constant direction, okay? And it became their downfall. And when the Messiah finally showed up for them, they didn't have enough faith. And all they wanted to do was see his signs. They wanted him to perform signs all the time. Matthew 16, uh, verses 1 through 4. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. Ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall be there shall no sign be given unto thee but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. So we see a big difference here between the nation of Israel and the body of Christ, one living by sight and signs, and the other living by faith. So it's safe to assume that the nation of Israel will continue to require signs even into the 70th week of Daniel during the tribulation Jacob's trouble and one of these signs we happen to see in Revelation 12 now we know by understanding dispensations that Revelation 12 is during the time of Daniel's 70th week and it is solely for the nation of Israel this is after the body of Christ has been removed caught up Harpazod, raptured unto our Lord Jesus. Okay, so in order to for me to set the stage here, so to speak, we need to look at a couple different passages in God's Word, okay? We read in Genesis 1, 4-19, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven, to give light upon the earth and it was so and God made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night he made the stars also and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth 
and to rule over the earth and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the fourth day hallelujah Job 38 30 to 33 canst thou bind the sweet influences of Pallades or loose the bands of Orion canst thou bring forth Maseroth in his season or canst thou guide Arcturus with his sons knowing thou the ordinances of heaven canst thou set the dominion thereof in the earth now here God is sort of putting Job in his place okay Job was complaining and God is uh, asking him these questions making Job seem like the little small little ant that he really was compared to God now Amos in 5 8 seek him that maketh the seven stars and Orion and turneth the shadow of death into the morning and maketh the day dark with night that calleth for the waters of the sea and poureth them out upon the face of the earth the Lord is his name in Psalm 8 3 when I consider thy heavens the work of thy fingers the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained Psalm 147 4 he telleth the number of the stars he calleth them all by their names great is our Lord and of great power his understanding is infinite in Micah 5 2 to 3 but thou Bethlehem Ephrata though thou be little among the thousands of Judah yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel whose going forth have been from old from everlasting therefore will he give them up until the time that she which travaileth hath brought forth the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel in Revelation 12 verse 2 and there appeared a great wonder in heaven a woman clothed with the Sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of twelve stars and she being with child cried travailing in pain in birth and pain to be delivered so in Genesis we see the reason why God created the stars the planets the Sun and the moon and he said they were for signs and seasons now the word seasons here does not mean summer winter fall and spring okay the uh, the translation here relates to the timing of their feasts okay so they would know when to celebrate Passover and Tabernacles and Rosh Hashanah and all those good celebrations that they have and the signs here are in relation to prophecies and symbols of events for future events and so on now in Micah we see a prophecy that the Messiah would give them up okay them here being the nation of Israel until a time when she the woman the sign would be in travail or birth pains more commonly said you know about to give birth now in Revelation we see John talking about the actual sign mentioned in the prophecy of Micah a sign in the heaven the woman crowned with 12 stars being uh, the 12 being the 12 tribes of Israel she was giving birth with the moon at her feet and the Sun at her back and so on okay and the other passages we see how meticulous God is about the stars and everything he created in that in the second heaven and how he set them naming each and every one of the billions and billions of stars out there he calls each and every one of them by name okay so he didn't just place these things up there just because he was bored one day they're there for a reason if he took the time to establish all the stars and all the planets and all the constellations and all those beautiful things up there and he even made them in, into the constellations and he named all the stars and he took he took the time to do this folks like I said he didn't do it all that stuff because he was bored one day he did it for a reason and we see that for signs and for seasons okay now before I forget if you haven't seen the documentary um, uh, it's by a lawyer an attorney what's his name uh, Larson I think yeah Jim Larson 
The documentary is called The Bethlehem Star. And I, I believe that's the name of his uh, website. The Bethlehem Star org or dot net. Not sure. But it's Jim Larson. Okay. And if you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend you watch it because it, it's awesome. I mean, the information he found is astounding. And it has to do with the sign of the star of Bethlehem and the three wise men. Okay. Specifically, what the three wise men saw. And, uh, you know, they followed it for hundreds and hundreds of miles. And it led them to our Lord Jesus. And when they found him, he was a toddler. He, he was about two, in between two and three years old, okay? And they gave him gifts and so on. The, the frankincense, uh, myrrh, and, and that. And you know the story, all right? Now, if you thought the three my, the wise men found Jesus the day after he was born, in and in they saw him in a small manger and so on, then you've believed the myth and probably watched too many movies because uh, that's not what happened. I suggest you go back and read the story and you'll see with careful attention that when the three wise men came to tell Herod, they, w they went to ask Herod, they, they said, where's our king that was born? Uh, you know, the, the king and Herod had, didn't know anything about it. Well, it was two years later that, uh, you know, that Herod went out to kill all the children under the age of two years old okay that's why he said kill all male children under the age of two because Jesus would have been around that age around two years old during that time all right when the wise men finally got to him and visited and then they left quickly to hide from Herod so they wouldn't be killed because they lied to him well anyway I digress but back to our interesting sign in 2017, next year, almost exactly a year from now, a year and a month, on September 23rd, the actual sign of Revelation 12 will be seen. Okay? Now, hear me out. I'll prove it to you. And it's going to be seen from Jerusalem, which is very important because we know who needs the sign. Okay? This isn't for us, folks. The nation of Israel requires a sign, and this is the mother of signs. Now, let me explain a few things here. The 12 stars include three planets, and the reason is the planets were known to the Jews as being wandering stars, okay? So they're included in this sign as well, and I'll show you that. Also, I've gone back about 4,000 years from 2017 and a thousand years into the future on the program Stellarium which I'll show you in a minute and there is no such sign in the past or in the future none zip zilch this is the only time this happens folks okay now you know what let me see if I can pull it up here for a second uh, pull it up on the screen so I can show you what we're talking about all right Here's the program Stellarium, okay? It's free, and you can go online, search it. I'll leave a uh, link to that as well in the description box so you can download it and take a look at this for yourself. Now, here we see Virgo, okay? Uh, the Virgin, all right? Here's Leo, the Lion, and I have it on the date 2016 8-10, and uh, I wanted you to see this. Today's the 28th, 27 28th. Now, yesterday we had something interesting last night happen. There was a conjunction between Jupiter and Venus. And I'm going to show you that. Okay. Now, here's the 10th. We're going to go 11, 12, 13, all the way up to last night. There it is. There's Venus and Jupiter right here. And 25, 26. 27 last night there's the conjunction that's what everybody saw last night well actually it was hard to see because it it stays underneath the uh, below the horizon and it's you can't really see it because it's daytime up here anyway where I'm at I couldn't see it but fortunately we have this program and we can see it now now the reason why we're looking at this we need to take a look at next year so we're gonna go to actually we're gonna start this year in the month of this is October 27th here's Jupiter okay it's coming in it's coming in right here September 27th 
Now watch it. Keep your eye on Jupiter. Jupiter is known as the king planet, okay? The Messiah, all right? Notice what it does here. It goes in. We're in November, and November 20th, right around there, it goes into the womb of the Virgin. Now, for you ladies out there who have had children, how many months does your little baby stay inside of your tummy? Right? Nine months, right? Okay. Or nine and a half months, whatever. But here we go. We're in February. Okay, notice that Jupiter is inside. We're February, March, April. Oh, wait. So anyway, from uh, October, let's go back. We'll go back till it first hits, okay? So we're in October, November 18, right around the 20th. So from November 20th, let's say, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. Okay, that's nine months, right? All right. Now, here is the date of the sign next year. Here's 920, okay? The actual date of the sign would be on 923, but I want to show you as this goes on here. So we'll start a little bit early. In the beginning of the month, all right? September, uh, August 31st, and we'll move along September 2nd. Now watch Jupiter. Jupiter slowly exiting the womb. And here comes the sun. There's the moon. And we're on the 23rd. The exact date of this sign. The moon is at her feet. Okay. Now let's go back and read Revelation real quick. Uh, let's see if I can get it up here. I just want to read this so as we look at it so that way you can see exactly what I'm talking about here uh, Matthew sorry about that folks I'll get to it uh, it's coming okay there it is and there appeared a great wonder in the heaven a woman clothed in the Sun here's the Sun okay she's clothed in the Sun the moon at her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars notice without Mercury Mars and Venus there's only nine stars normally in the constellation of Leo and Leo is this symbol for Jesus Christ okay the Messiah Regulus happens to be uh, also kingship but anyway normally there's nine stars crowning her okay but on this specific date and this date only all these things line up she's crowned with 12 stars here one two like I said planets are called wandering stars to the Jews okay one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve on this specific date now if you're good at math statistically speaking all of these different events taking place at the same time is one in billions okay billions now like I said I've gone back 4,000 years I mean I could have went further but what's the point point? and I went into the future a thousand years and there's nothing like this not even close my friends not even close okay so we have she's crowned with 12 stars clothed in the Sun the moon at her feet and she's giving birth to Jupiter all right and that happens on the 23rd of September in 2017 this is a literal and very visible sign in the heavens folks this isn't a gimmick okay now look at the woman here she's got the 12 stars symbolizing the 12 tribes she's got the moon at her feet she's got the Sun at her back and she's giving birth to Jupiter which is known to symbolize the king planet the Messiah Christ okay now let me say this again a lot of people think that this sign happens to be the birth of Christ because the first part of Revelation 12 talks about the Messiah uh, the uh, it talks about Satan and the 200 
angels being thrown out onto the earth and all that. But what is Revelation 12 is a bigger picture, okay? It's not talking about just one event. It's talking about the entire scope of events over the past 2,000 years, all right? So it's not the birth, okay? And that's why I mentioned the documentary by Jim Larson called Bethlehem Start because he actually shows you what the sign was when our Savior was born. And it's nowhere close to this sign here in Revelation 12, not even close, okay? In fact, the sign of Jesus' birth doesn't involve the constellation of Virgo at all. It involves the constellation of Leo, this one up here, okay? And uh, the line, the, the Regulus, uh, this Regulus right here. And the king planet again, Jupiter. So please watch the documentary. It's very informative. And, uh, you know, also let me mention here now that the worshiping of constellations and all these things and stars is called astrology, okay? And it's blasphemy, all right? It's idolatry, and just like the horoscopes and all that mess. That's all satanic to the core, okay? What we're doing here is looking at God's writing in the stars. This is astronomy. And we read in Genesis that God put these things here specifically for signs. And who needs signs, friends? The Jews. And we see those signs here in Micah. And we, we, we see it here in Revelation. And also, it's what the three wise men were looking at when they went to find and worship their, their King of Kings, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. How do you think they knew about the birth of Christ? They were studying the astronomy and the constellations and all these planets and stars for a thousands of years, okay? This was passed down through generations that Christ would be born and there would be a sign in the heavens. And they knew about this sign and that's what they saw and that's what led them to go see baby Jesus okay so okay now this Revelation 12 sign happens exactly two days after the Feast of Trumpets Rosh Hashanah okay Rosh Hashanah the Feast of Trumpets starts on the I believe it's either the 20th or 21st there's two days there okay 20 or 20 but it's two days before the 23rd before this sign takes place all right now get this seven years later falls on 2024 now 25 and 125 and 20 days after this sign here up here okay lands in the fall feasts exactly when the second coming is prophesied to happen now there's a lot more information regarding the specific date okay about the beginning and the ending of all these things all right and uh, there's just not enough time to go through it in this video because I could sit here and make a four-hour video going through all the details but fortunately I'm gonna leave you a link and you can take a look at this all to yourself okay now um, you know I again I, I just I wanted to get this information out there like I said you use discernment and do with it what you will okay now something else very interesting happens in the fall of 2024 and it has to do with the king planet and where it ends up okay and where it ends up at during this time period on the 9th of Av in 2024 the king planet Jupiter is found between the horns of Taurus okay and I would pull it up pull it up for you but I don't have oh wait maybe I do I might have the picture to show you here let me see if I could pull it up for you uh, yeah, let's try that there it is okay this is what I was talking about this is the sign that happens in 2024 in the fall okay this is where Jupiter ends up in between the horns of Taurus the bull okay and what it, the common Hebrew name for Taurus is Shur, S-H-U-R, which can mean both coming and ruling, or in other words, the coming judge, okay? And this happens exactly 25 and 120 days after 23rd September 2017. In other words, this happens exactly seven years. 
the time of Daniel's 70th week. Exactly. To the day. To the day. The exact day, okay? Now, in short, Taurus represents the coming governor, Jesus Christ, his, and his congregation, okay? So, we see both the beginning sign and the ending sign. Exactly the right amount of days, according to Daniel 9 and Revelation. Now, at the second coming, at the end of Daniel's 70th uh, 70th week, Jesus tells us what's going to take place. In Matthew 24, 29, and 30, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and the, then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So the Jews will get their sign, okay, that they, that they need to believe. Plenty of them will be given uh, to them, not only the heavens, but also on the earth. They, they'll have the Antichrist, the abomination of desolation, the falling away, the apostasy, the seal signs. There's so many signs they're going to get. So what does this mean for us? What does this mean for us, the saints, the church? Well, I believe this Revelation 12 sign is a sign to the Jews that their time has come. God is about to close the dispensation of grace and move back to the dispensation under the Mosaic law called the dispensation of the kingdom, where once, once again, they'll have to perform works plus faith and endure until the end of the seven years to get into the earthly kingdom, the kingdom of heaven on earth. And if they get martyred before then, then they'll be raised at the end, okay? The Jews are about to wake up, friends. So pray for them. Pray for their safety. Pray for their salvation. And beloved, we're about to go home very soon. At any moment, our Lord is going to call us unto his glory. Then we'll be taken into our heavenly program. You know, considering that the Feast of Trumpets is just two days prior to this sign of Revelation 12 here. And that is very significant, folks. You know, that reminds me, there's another sign just two days before the Revelation sign, like I said, okay? Uh, and it happens on the Feast of Trumpets. And you really, really, really need to see this one. This could be huge, but you decide for yourself. I'll leave you a link for it in the description box. And uh, I'll call it the sign two days before the Revelation 12 sign with a link for you, okay? And take a look at that one. It's going to have something to do with Enoch's pillar and Orion, all right? And the tabernacle that God places as a sign in Egypt, all right? It's very interesting. Take a look at that. Now, what we should be doing at this time is planting seeds like crazy, okay? We should be sharing the salvation message with everyone around us. Don't hesitate, saints. The time is now, okay? The rapture could and will happen soon. We just don't know the exact time, but I'm pretty sure we're about to go home. Amen? And like I said at the start of this video, this isn't a prophecy of mine. This isn't prediction, okay? This is a sign that is actually coming. It will be visible. You will be able to see this sign if you really want to see it with your own two eyes. And there's no guessing about this. There's no speculation if it will be here on the 23rd of September because it will be here on the 23rd of September of 2017. Guaranteed, 100%, unless the Lord God changes his mind and decides to move the entire constellation of Virgo on the other side or you know anything can happen if the Lord wills it okay so this is a fact saints this is for real and hopefully we won't even be here to see it okay I don't think we will personally but the nation of Israel will be here to see it because this sign is for the nation of Israel they need a sign all right and we know that so anyway i hope this was interesting and i hope it's you know food for thought for you and i, I will leave several links in the description box go ahead and take take a good look at them and i'll even put a link in there 
uh, for the free download of Stellarium so you can play around with this thing here it's pretty interesting I mean you can do all kinds of stuff with this and I like it I've had it for a couple of years now and uh, it works good on the computer it hasn't crashed or anything like that so I'll leave you a link for that plus the other articles that I mentioned go ahead and do your own research um, again I'm not saying the rapture is going to happen on that date. I don't think it. On, I, I really don't think it will, because that date happens to be, there happens to be that very sign for the nation of Israel and not for the church. Okay, we know that. This sign is not for us. I mean, we're made aware of this sign, and I praise our Lord God that He opened my eyes and He gave me an opportunity to come across this information. And I and I and I thank Lord God for, uh, you know, saving and making the men that that came up with this, uh, you know, all this information about this sign and wrote articles and even wrote a couple books. And uh, I'm going to leave his name in the links also to to give him due credit for all this information. And uh, you could probably get a hold of him as well if you want more information. I mean, the guy's a genius when it comes to math and dates and all this information here. He knows what he's talking about, my friends. That's a fact. So with that said, I love you all, saints. Go out there, plant some seeds today. We don't have much time left. And if you got anything out of this video you'll understand that our time left on this earth is very, very short, my friends. So, if you have any friends out there that aren't saved, today's the day, right? I love you all. Peace and grace in Christ Jesus to all of you and your families. I hope you had a great weekend, and I'll see you on my next video.